of also picking up from what we talked about yesterday on the stream. Um, we're going to America seems to be ramping up military aggression towards China. Uh, and uh, this comes again, uh, World Socialist website, uh, another source there. Uh, they're, they're talking about how the Pentagon deterrence initiative is calling for intermediate range nuclear forces, which are banned by a particular treaty. Let me, let me see exactly what the name of this treaty is here. Um, it is, where is it? Oh, oh, um, the deterrence initiative, which calls for nuclear forces, is actually banned by the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. That's what it is. Had a hard time reading my notes. Um, so, so it's this this sort of deterrence initiative by by basically saying, oh, we're going to ramp up uh, military intervention in China, and we're also going to use nuclear weapons against China when we do is actually banned by this treaty um, that was, you know, put together by Japan, Taiwan, and Philippines because they would also be affected if a nuclear weapon goes off in China. Uh, the Pentagon is also asking for double the budget, double the budget for the Pacific region. So initially it was $2.2 billion, but now they want $4.7 billion. So they're asking for more money. And usually when they ask for more money, it's not because they're like, oh, we want to do some peace initiatives and we want to go in there and help people, uh, you know, with the with their civil rights challenges and things of that sort. No, it's to it's to have an active hot war with the country. And like I mentioned yesterday, uh, there's a quad, right? Uh, it, it's Japan, Australia and India working with America and they're going to push back um, militar militarily on China. Um, and India is going to act as a proxy. Modi already said that he's willing to, you know, basically let uh, America use the Navy and the Air Force in India to push back aggressively on China. Uh, and, and they're kind of using that as a point for their own elections. Right. So uh, th there was an official statement made by uh, Tony Blinken and Lloyd Austin. Right. Uh, to And they said that they're they're going to threaten to push back against, quote, Chinese aggression. What aggression? Where are we seeing China actually try to attack America? Physically, in, in any way, shape, or form. What I mean, what aggression do we see? Right? Like, China isn't pointing fucking guns. They're not moving troops into, uh, into or near a fucking United States military base in the South, Southeast Pacific region. We don't see them doing that. This is American aggression towards China because China is probably doing a lot better economically. And from my understanding, I, I talked to Kit Cabello and Daniel Lupker from Hardlands Media about this last year on a pod, uh, on a podcast they did with me where, where they basically talked about how China's um, uh, weaponry is a lot more advanced than uh, that America is. So if we do engage in a hot war, just like if we engage in a hot war with, with Iran, it won't be like Iraq. It won't be like Afghanistan. Their weaponry is far more advanced, and there will be a lot higher casualties. And again, like the Japanese foreign minister basically said, well, we'll back America up on this, and we're and, and nuclear armaments are included in how we're backing them up. Nuclear warfare is included in this thing. So now we have two, one nuclear power poking the other nuclear power to be like, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You use your nuclear weapons first. You use your nuclear weapons first. Right. And this is the same nuclear power that wants to restrict Iran from having nuclear weapons. Because, oh, man, they might use it because they're crazy and that'll, you know, create a nuclear fallout. Oh, man, this is so nuts. Right. The America is the one that wants to put sanctions on Iran because they won't follow the uh, the the nuclear deal that they set up. But America is the one that's like, yeah, by the way, we're willing to use nuclear weapons. And I talk about that, too. I talked about that a couple of weeks ago, um, maybe two weeks ago, where America has come out and said that they're willing to use nuclear weapons first. And Russia has come out and said, yeah, we're not willing to engage in nuclear warfare unless we're attacked first. 
And China basically said the same thing. And China was like, we have no interest in using nuclear weapons. It's totally a retaliatory measure. But here comes America. Oh, we'll do it first. By the way, we've already done it first. And we'll do it first again. USA number one. And they want to put sanctions on a country that do, that has no uh, no ideation of using nuclear weapons. How hypocritical is that? Based on all of this, there should be a, a coalition that comes together and says America needs to be reined in uh, on their nuclear armaments. And we're going to put sanctions on America until they agree to stop being... Uh, such a child and dropping their dicks on everybody's table. We're in the middle of a pandemic and America, these fucking, oh yeah, uh, Tony Blinken, Lloyd Austin, oh, the first uh, black de secretary of defense. But boy, that's exciting. Wants to start a new war in, in, uh, in, in the South Pacific. We got wars happening in the Middle East. And now there's a new one they might start over in the South Pacific. Yeah, because that's exactly what we need, right? During a pandemic, during a global pandemic, when the entire world is like, hey, fucking let's just put down our weapons because we got a bigger mess on our hands that we need to clean up and let's not overcomplicate things. The whole world wants peace. And America is like, no, 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 no. We need, to, we need to figure out how to start more wars. Why? Because America is run on a war economy. That's what their economy, that's what this economy runs on. That's what capitalism runs on. They need to sell more weapons. They need to make more arm de arms deals. So now they have three new customers, India, Japan, and Australia. And I'm sure that they, they will try to sell weapons to, to, to some, you know, rebel faction in China or some shit. That's how this works. Again, Joe Biden came out and said, oh, uh, we'll we'll do this diplomatically. Where's the diplomacy? You literally you you have two people from your cabinet, one of who is like your best friend or some shit, one of whom sits on the board of of uh Raytheon. So, so it's back. Okay, so I gotta I had to reset my camera. Uh and <laughs> some of you guys are saying uh it happens. When you criticize the U.S. government, I know I, I, I always I always get paranoid about that. I, I'm always like, oh, shit, I'm talking about anti-establishment shit. My camera just stopped working in the middle of the stream. I wonder if this is this is a uh, U.S. intervention here. Um, but um, yeah, so so to, to kind of wrap this up here, here's what's going to happen, right? You're 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 one. You can't criticize Iran for using nuclear weapons when you wholeheartedly come out and you're like, oh, man, yeah, we're super excited about using fucking uh, nuclear weapons and we're going to do it first. And we're now going to get into a hot war with with China. And if you do get into a hot war with China, um, that is going to one, it's going to be catastrophic because China is is their their weaponry is more advanced than what we saw in Iraq and Afghanistan, right? Not just that, but you're going to create a whole new cycle of xenophobia towards Asian people in this country. You already have xenophobia towards Asian people in this country, thanks to the words of the great Donald Trump uh, calling it the China virus and 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 shit like that. Uh, and now you're going to get into a hot war with China, uh, but Biden is not going to let up on on the whole, oh, China's evil, China's evil narrative, right? Which, which is a whole whole load of bullshit. Um, and now you're going to have Democrats responsible for anti-Chinese xenophobia and racism, um, which is ridiculous. And again, it's like if the Democrats will be the party of inclusivity, then don't go to war and chastise an entire country of people, chastise an entire group of people. Just don't fucking do that. So the Democrats are going to be responsible for a new wave and a new round of xenophobia. Uh, you know that that is that that that's going to come out of being uh, militaristically aggressive towards uh, towards China. 
And, and you know, it's just like it's going to affect people of all Asian descent, whether you're Korean or Vietnamese or, or Japanese. Do you really think the average American knows the difference between uh, what a Chinese person looks like and what a, a Japanese? No, they all blump them into Asian and they all will get persecuted, just like they did in, in after 9-11. After 9-11, there was this wave of Islamophobia, which just translated to anybody brown must be Muslim. Anybody with a beard must be Muslim. Let's just go attack them. That's really what the Democrats are doing here. So, you know, again, if you are somebody that's like, yay, Biden, you should look at this and be like, no, either jump the fuck off. Like, this is the time to abandon the Democratic Party and push for a bigger, stronger anti-war movement that's connected with the labor movement, just like we did in, in the early 1900s. The labor movement was a massive anti-war movement. That's what we need again. Uh, okay, I'm going to take a look at a few uh, comments here. Uh, Holly says, this is poking the tiger. Exactly. You know, uh, there's ex military exercises in the South Chinese Sea. All of this stuff is 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 all just ramping up to, to a hot war or an intimidation so that China will bend the knee to American will, to bend the knee to American imperialism, right? That's really all they're looking for. Um, Sanctions worsening the pandemic. Yeah, the, the, you can see that in Iran, that they have uh, sanctions that they put up on Iran and the Iranians are suffering. They can't get medical equipment. Same thing in Venezuela. Now, Venezuela is doing better because they actually have social programs in place, social safety nets in place. But those sanctions are affecting how well those social safety nets can work. We'll hoard our vaccine, and but we'll gladly sell you weapons. Yeah, that's the American economy. They don't want to sell the vaccine. They they would they will sell the vaccine to countries that can afford them. But the third world countries are going to be in in trouble uh, because they can't afford the vaccines. <laughs> the NSA is always watching. Yeah, that's that's probably why my Wi Fi is going crazy. Uh, yeah, Holly points out they attacked Sikhs thinking that they were Muslim. Yeah, it didn't really matter. They didn't really know, right? Like when you when you're when you are working off of an ideology rooted in ignorance, you're not going, well, let me study what's going on. Let me figure out exactly where my no. Hate will just blind you and you will just hate everybody that's vaguely the color that, you know, that they 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 say the enemy is. And that's exactly what they're about to do. So the Democrats for claiming how inclusive they are are going to create a new wave of uh xenophobia and hatred. And by the way, Joe Biden voted for the Iraq war. He voted for that. So he basically voted for xenophobia against all brown people. Let's uh pop over to Rockfin. Sarah over on Rockfin says, when Joe Biden was young, he chopped down the liberal tree and lied about it. <laughs> uh, thank you for the tip, Sarah. And I, uh, I hope to see you uh, on the, uh, the, the next stream there. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of uh, of various shows that I uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation 
or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.